Time and space are like a fabric, uh, like rubber, like a trampoline net. Turn this trampoline net into a pretzel and allow yourself to go backwards in time. We were able to travel from Earth to the moon, across a quarter of a million miles of space, land on the moon, and then return to Earth because to Newton's understanding of gravity. Albert Einstein, the great physicist, once said that gravity is a deception. Einstein had devoted his career to revealing the reality of gravity, refuting Newton's widely held beliefs, and providing answers to puzzling time travel queries. Why is there just one way in which time travel exists? When you travel at the speed of light, why does time slow down? The most recent hypotheses and discoveries made by modern physicists attempt to provide an absurd theory of time to explain the unexplainable. Now let's learn more. The gravity theory of Newton, disproving Newton's gravitation theory. People didn't begin to seriously question their surroundings until the 1500s. The ancient Greeks thought that gods and deities could explain and rationalize everything. But by the 1500s, scientists such as Galileo and Braha had established that Earth was a planet, not just one. In actuality, the planets in our solar system orbited the Sun. Kepler went one step farther and described how the planets and their moons moved along their own axis, resembling an elliptical orbit rather than in a precisely circular orbit. Newton followed in the 17th century. The world has heard about the English physicist who, by accident, discovered gravity after an apple fell on his head. It is now accepted, though, that Newton did not just by chance come up with the theory of gravity. For a long while now, he had been witnessing motionless things shift from their stable positions due to some unexplained force. Yes, this also involved witnessing apples to fall from trees. After several hours of study, Newton finally postulated that this enigmatic force was gravity. He was also able to advance Kepler's elliptical orbit theory as a result of the discovery. The Moon, which is the closest celestial body to Earth, is only able to travel alongside the planet because of a straight-line tangent that crosses the Earth's center and holds the Moon in place beneath the planet's gravitational pull. But before Brian Cox began challenging Newton's theories, there was Albert Einstein, the renowned physicist. Though he did not explicitly refute gravity, Einstein asserted that Newton's ideas were one-dimensional. The general theory of relativity put forward by Einstein states that time and space warp and give rise to gravity. Einstein went one step farther and defined the fabric of space and time as a sheet with bends where a body's mass exceeds a threshold. Furthermore, he asserted that a clock placed inside the Earth's gravitational field on its surface would run slower than a clock placed outside of its orbit, where the laws of gravity no longer applied. Gravity, which was later shown to exist between two things, regardless of whether they are planets in orbit or two marbles on a tabletop, is governed by the inverse square law. According to the law, gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between two objects and immediately relates to their masses. The speed of light in a vacuum would remain the same for an observer from outside, according to Einstein, who also claimed that the laws of physics applied to everyone not speeding faster than light. According to Einstein's theory, space and time are one and the same thing, or the space-time continuum, and gravity results from a bend in this continuum. Gravity is not a force as a result. The Explanation of Newton's Ideas by Brian Cox Although Newton is regarded as one of the greatest physicists of all time, the contemporary physics community doesn't exactly hold him in high regard. Among those in that circle is Brian Cox, who clarified that although there are those who believe Newton was lying about gravity, he did not fully define the apparent force. Cox contended that Newton was merely attempting to provide an explanation for a fundamental idea that was universally understood and accepted. Now, one explanation for the lack of interest in Newton's day and age was the greater dominance of religion 
over science. Newton was a religious man nonetheless. He couldn't, or perhaps didn't want, to continue developing the theory of gravity past an explanation of the force. According to Cox, when pressed to explain gravity, Newton just stated that its presence indicated that a sentient entity has authority and controlled the planets and solar system. That was as far as Newton was prepared to go. Thus, how can one overcome gravity and subvert the principles of physics which encompass the laws of time? It really is that easy. In order to live on Earth, you have to genuinely defy the rules of physics, applications of time dilation. The idea of time dilation, as defined by the theory of special relativity, basically indicates that a clock that is at rest and moving in an inertial frame of reference will tick more slowly than a clock that is stationary. The theory of time dilation could advance time travel if it were put to use. In theory, passengers in a fast-moving car could get to their destination a few seconds sooner than those at rest. Only the theories of general relativity, which is based on gravity, or special relativity, which is based on relative velocity, can explain why this is possible. The International Space Station made the decision to test this idea by sending humans in a fast-moving vehicle around the Earth. Although the experiment was successful, it only demonstrated that the astronauts felt a 20 millisecond delay in time. Keep in mind that modern technology have certain limits. Einstein used the idea of a light clock to describe his theory of relativity when he first suggested it. A light beam is emitted, and it appears to be traveling in a straight line to an observer, moving at the speed of light when it bounces off two surfaces. An observer at rest or someone else outside of that point of reference would believe the light beam has a greater distance to go. According to Einstein, the speed of light is the only constant, regardless of how fast something is moving. Particularly the laws of gravity, all other laws of physics are rendered meaningless. Thus, time is not a constant and can be stretched to suit your demands, according to the special theory of relativity. When two events occur concurrently and an individual is moving in relation to them, their perception of the events may differ from that of an individual viewing the event from a fixed position. Uses of special relativity in typical life. During his lifetime, two applications of special relativity were made possible by Einstein's theory, the twin paradox and length contraction. According to the twin paradox, if two twins were split apart in such a way that one was sent hurtling into space outside of Earth's gravitational field, the other would return to Earth much older than the original. Time dilation provided an explanation for this, meaning that the spaceship's internal clock was running more slowly than the earthly clock. As a result, time seemed to slow down for the twin aboard the spaceship allowing it to advance by a few seconds in comparison to the counterpart on Earth. Well, this idea is really intriguing. It hasn't, however, been encountered in regular occurrences. On the other hand, the theory of length contraction has practical implications, if not quite in the mind-bending way one might hope. Imagine this principle applied to a fast-moving item, like a race vehicle. When a race car passes you at a high speed compared to its true speed, your mind makes it appear smaller than it is. Not by much, but there is a difference between your impression of the car and the actual car, which is noticeable nonetheless. If you could see something traveling at the speed of light, this would seem much more monumental. Do you aware of any real-world applications of Einstein's special relativity theory? something that you might be using at this very moment? Systems for GPS navigation. GPS systems use signals that are exchanged back and forth between your device and satellites orbiting the Earth to determine your exact location. With the exception of a very small margin of error, the majority of GPS systems are extremely precise. 
It's crucial to keep in mind that these satellites are orbiting the Earth in space, where the gravitational pull of the planet is greatly less. Imagine for a moment that special relativity theory wasn't explained. So what? First of all, there would have been no such thing as a very precise navigation system with real-world applications. Second, even if they did, they wouldn't be useful since they would be erroneous. It's difficult to envision a world without navigation systems. And the only reason we have them and utilize them effectively is because the businesses that launch satellites into orbit account for special relativity, which allows them to consistently estimate the effects of time dilation and produce reliable results. The General Relativity Theory Nearly 10 years later in 1915, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity. This theory rationalizes that gravity is a result of a mass stretching the space-time fabric, refuting the notion that gravity is an intrinsic force that exists in everything that occupies mass. You would need to picture the universe in four dimensions, three for space and one for time, in order to comprehend the idea of general relativity. Imagine now that every point in this four-dimensional universe could contain planets, stars, or even regular people. Naturally, they would be able to bend or expand the space-time dimensions simply by virtue of their mass. Gravity, or at least what we think of as gravity, originates from this curvature. According to Newton, gravity is an intrinsic force that the Earth possesses and is responsible for directing everything toward its center. According to Einstein, space and time functioned as a fabric, and that is why objects were drawn toward the center of the Earth rather than by a force. Here's a better way to picture this. Picture a long trampoline. Now picture putting a bowling ball on the trampoline at an arbitrary location. It is evident that the bowling ball's bulk is precisely sufficient to cause a dimple in the trampoline. Step over to the trampoline and toss a stone onto it. Then, what occurs? The marble rolls naturally in the direction of the dimple the bowling ball created. You will notice that heavier things, like tennis balls, don't fall toward the dimple created by the bowling ball as easily as the marble did when you gradually begin replacing the marble with them. Similarly, if you drop something with a significant and similar weight to the bowling ball, for example another bowling ball, it would not go toward the dimple made by the original bowling ball, but instead would make its own. This is an oversimplified explanation of what occurs when we consider the Milky Way's governance by the fabric of space and time. The Moon is our natural satellite, and the indentation the Earth made only draws the Moon toward it, allowing it to remain in its orbit. The Moon's weight, obviously insufficient to resist the pull of Earth's orbit, but sufficient to allow it to exist in its own space, on the fabric of space and time, is the only reason it isn't falling freely. Similar to how the Earth may be drawn to the dent or curvature made by the huge Sun, it is prevented from obliterating into the Sun by its substantial mass. As a result, Newton's gravitational laws disregarded the actual effects of gravity and how they affect our environment. A useful use of general relativity was demonstrated in 1919 during a solar eclipse. Because they are huge enough to escape the curve of the Sun, stars fall freely. Occasionally, though, a lighter star finds itself caught in the Sun's orbit. Because of this, the Sun's rays are obstructed from reaching Earth, resulting in a solar eclipse. How time is affected by gravity. Einstein utilized certain cosmological constants in his calculations to establish the connection between the general theory of relativity and our cosmos. It wasn't until much later that it was realized the cosmos is constantly expanding rather than remaining constant. Then, Einstein described this as his greatest error to date. However, the Big Bang and the ripple effect 
are two natural occurrences that are explained by the theory of general relativity. Albert Einstein postulated that heavy objects cause ripple effects in the fabric of our universe as they move across time and space. This is perhaps something you still remember. General relativity provides an explanation for how the universe evolved from a very hot and dense condition. The idea describes how Einstein's famous equation, matter and energy, influences the geometry of the cosmos and represents the expansion of space and time. Following his correction of his equation to account for the universe's perpetual expansion, Einstein came to the conclusion that certain galaxies are driven apart by the universe's expansion. This aligned with observational data collected about concurrently with the publication of Einstein's ideas. The general relativity equations of Einstein aid in our comprehension of the properties of the early universe. They provide an explanation for the origin of our cosmic environment and provide credence to the concept of a primordial singularity. One of the most basic ideas in Einstein's general theory of relativity is the idea of a ripple in space-time. It follows that large objects like black holes and stars have the ability to cause the space-time fabric to curl around them. On the other hand, they are non-stationary objects that can produce gravitational waves when they accelerate or interact significantly with other gravitational fields. These waves are referred to as ripples in the space and time continuum. Accordingly, if something were to disturb the space-time fabric, it should cause ripples in space, which are what we now refer to as gravitational waves. These waves, or ripples, can travel through space at the speed of light, carrying with them data about shifting gravitational fields. Although gravitational waves were hypothesized long after Einstein published his general theory of relativity, they weren't mathematically confirmed until 2015. They were confirmed in 2015, 100 years after Einstein's 1915 prediction by the laser-based LIGO ground-based observatory. This most recent finding demonstrates that they are more common and can be detected at far longer wavelengths. A new era in observational astronomy was ushered in in 2015 with the groundbreaking detection of gravitational waves by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO. This idea was named the ripple effect because in principle it resembled the ripple that results from dropping something into a still pond. From the disruption causing object, the ripples radiate outward. This theory has made it easier for scientists to detect astronomical occurrences like black hole and neutron star collisions today. By providing a glimpse into the invisible, this also contributed to our growing comprehension of the universe. The Dilemma of Chronological Protection Yes, most people agree with Einstein's theories. That doesn't mean, though, that the physics community hasn't discussed and refined Einstein's theories of relativity or other tenable theories. Stephen Hawking proposed the chronology protection hypothesis in 1992. The idea was presented by Professor Hawking in a 1992 study where he noted, it seems that there is a chronology protection agency which prevents the appearance of closed time-like curves and so makes the universe safe for historians. Professor Hawking is a very dry comedian. After decades of trying to figure out why time was not a constant, Einstein developed this theoretical proposal to explain the idea of time travel. Time loops and backward time travel are theoretical possibilities, according to Stephen Hawking. This hypothesis helped people comprehend the limitations and possible effects of the conventional principles of physics. Science fiction and science fiction literature have extensively examined the concept of time travel. For his part, however, in an attempt to develop useful time travel applications, Stephen Hawking conventionally accepted ideas pertaining not only to time, but also to the rules of modern physics. 
The chronology protection conjecture postulates that closed time curve creation is prevented by the laws of physics. These are essentially self-repeating pathways across space-time that enable objects or information to travel back in time. General relativity has been modified in Stephen Hawking's concept. Recall that Einstein proposed the theory of gravity, which states that enormous things like stars and black holes cause a curvature in space and time that draws other objects toward them. When considering the effects of closed time curves on the structure of causality, the physicist's conjecture is relevant. If time loops were permitted, one may imagine scenarios in which an event affects its own prior occurrence. This leads to paradoxes such as the grandfather paradox, in which it is possible to prevent one's own existence by changing past occurrences. According to Hawking's chronology protection conjecture, the formation of time loops, also known as closed time-like curves, is naturally prevented by the rules of physics. Although it hasn't been thoroughly demonstrated, it illustrates the notion that the cosmos has defenses in place to preserve causality. This entails avoiding circumstances in which past events impact the present, as this could result in perplexing paradoxes and impair our comprehension of space and time. The cosmic censorship hypothesis, which postulates that singularities such as those found in black holes are permanently concealed from outside observers by event horizons, is a key component of this defense. If this theory is right, it could act as a cosmic safety net, preventing the creation of time loops that could lead to causality violations. The chronology protection conjecture of Stephen Hawking has left the physics community completely bewildered. Since this physicist's 1992 presentation at the major physics convention, it has been discussed and challenged. There are several ways to react to Hawking's chronology protection conjecture. Curiosity, skepticism, and investigation. Despite the absence of hard evidence, the speculation has sparked insightful debates and new lines of inquiry. Some physicists have praised its attempt to tackle time travel related problems in general relativity, demonstrating Hawking's natural curiosity. However, it is under investigation since some academics doubt its generalizability and argue that closed time curves could still arise in particular situations. Theoretical and experimental work is always being done in the pursuit of a complete knowledge of time. The chronology protection conjecture is questioned by theoretical physicists as they investigate alternatives to Einstein's equations. Others, however, study possible quantum effects on temporal dynamics by delving into quantum mechanics. The response from the physics community is indicative of the complex and dynamic investigation into the nature of time in the universe. Contemporary theories of time travel. Even though there will always be arguments and controversies within the scientific community regarding whether time is a construct or a state that is always changing, contemporary physicists can agree that time does not flow uniformly. Rather, it's a dynamic that depends on both gravity and velocity. When we contemplate objects of enormous mass and considerable speed, that is, objects in the universe, the idea that time can be transformed takes on much greater interest. Scientists working today have been trying to learn more about black holes and how items pass through them. They have identified and located the event horizon, which is the region surrounding a black hole's edge. In a sense, this is the end of the road. Researchers have emphasized that due of a black hole's all-encompassing nature, even light moving at extremely high speeds would not be able to escape it. Time dilation is a complex subject that gets oversimplified when discussing the twin paradox or applying it to GPS systems. According to contemporary science, one can only fully comprehend and enjoy the potential of time dilation and, by extension, 
time travel in close proximity to a black hole. As of right now, nobody knows everything that can be found inside a black hole. The only thing they are certain of is that traditional conceptions of space and time break down beyond the event horizon. A lot of people have even proposed that near the event horizon, time can stop. Contemporary physics integrates concepts from relativity, quantum mechanics, and cosmology to provide a complex and multifaceted understanding of time. The single straightforward idea of time as a universal ticking clock has given way to a dynamic, networked conception in which time is directly related to the structure of the cosmos. Scientists and intellectuals are still fascinated by the investigation of these contemporary ideas since it opens up new possibilities for comprehending the essence of life. Do you still believe much has to be discovered, or do you think the concept of space and time is as straightforward as we originally thought? Tell us in the comments below. I appreciate you seeing. We'll see you with a new video soon.